Heinz begins his path toward redemption and fortune with one of the biggest aha moments in the history of American food. While traveling in England, Heinz gets his first taste of something called catsup, a fermented fish sauce that dates back to China circa 300 BC. Catsup is used to mask the taste of spoiled meat, a common problem at the time. But in many cases, the catsup is worse than the rancid meat that it's covering. That's when H.J. has a revelation. What if he could replace those slushy fish bits with something more appealing, like fresh tomatoes? Remember, there's no refrigeration. Uh, you know, who knew that's how Heinz ketchup was created? Just one of the stories you'll find on the fast history of its new show coming to the History Channel. It takes a look at all sorts of subjects from iconic brands like Heinz to Budweiser, covers the mob, everything. Sherry Ordner Middleman is the executive producer of The Fast History of, and she joins us live this morning. Good morning. Good morning. All right, good. We appreciate you being here. We're going to go through a couple of your uh, subjects that you cover. And uh, why'd you pick Heinz? Heinz is one, one of many. Um, what we pick are sort of brands, items, uh, cultural jugg juggernauts that we all um, know and love. So what we pick are brands that we all know and love, and we're going to go behind the scenes and really give you the whole story as to how we got there, how we got to that place. And I didn't know um, that ketchup was bigger in Canada than any place else. I thought we had that locked down here. <laughs> Apparently they still eat more ketchup than us. What do you know? All right, tell us about Bush Beer and Budweiser and uh, tell us about the, how that got tied to baseball. Yeah, so it's an interesting story. So um, Budweiser, you know, which comes from a town in Germany called Budweiss, um, had this sort of image problem, which was they had they there was this anti-German sentiment happening in America after the war, and so Budweiser really wanted to Americanize themselves. So they really started to go red, white, and blue, um, and ultimately, they you know said, well, what's more what's more American? You know, than, than sports, and they, they started to kind of take over, and they they really um, led the way into Super Bowl advertising being a huge thing. It was it was not the the first Super Bowl. I think it was the third Super Bowl. There's a lot of facts in my brain from working on this show, but I believe it was the third um, where they had a Super Bowl ad, and you know, sort of became tied to the Super Bowl from there. And 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 as the commercials got bigger and bigger. Um, the Super Bowl became the place to advertise. Ah. So we're looking at some clips here from the show here. Does, uh, does each uh, little, little section here feature sort of a, a reenactment like that? So a lot of them do. Um, they, some of the reenactments come from another series on History Channel called The Food That Built America. So when we have that great reenactment footage on a story that we're covering, we do absolutely use that fun stuff. Um, but the series also has brands that that um, don't have reenactment, but we use a ton of great archival material, a lot of old commercials. Um, we've got brand experts, historians. So we really paint a picture um, using a combination of things. So whether it's that recreation footage, um, cool old footage, cool commercials, or, or brand experts, industry experts. All right, and so it's um, not just products that you're featuring here. You also have a, a, a portion here about uh, Chicago lawyer Adolphus Green and the Loose Brothers. Mm-hmm. So that's actually part of the Nabisco story um, and the Oreo cookie story. And what's that? So um, we, did, we did an episode on Nabisco, and the, um, the amazing thing about the Oreo cookie is sort of how the Oreo cookie became iconic. Uh, what a lot of people don't realize is that the Hydrox cookie actually came first. Huh. Um, and there was this sort of rivalry between became Sunshine Bakery and Nabisco, and Sunshine Bakery made the Hydrox first. Um, and part of the fun story there is that Hydrox was was sort of so angry and jilted about the Oreo, what they believed was ripping them off, that they sort of focused on, you know, they copied us, they copied us in their in their advertising. They almost became like, you know, the get off my lawn neighbor. Ah. Oreo was, you know, sunshine, children enjoying and twist and turn that cookie. And Americans started to fall in love with Oreo and really associate Oreo with joy and happiness. And, and um, so as iconic as Oreo is, it actually came after the Hydrox. Uh -huh. Interesting. Well, it's cool because it's only 30 minutes long and you get all your history in 30 minutes or less. It's the Fast History of Air Sunday nights on the History Channel. Thanks for being with us, Sherry. Thank you.